Kitano Takeshi is probably the most recognizable Japanese person on earth. Known for his comedy, films, and writing, he's a living legend. Let's take a look at how he came to be. Takeshi grew up in Adachi, with two older brothers and an older sister in post-war Japan. Needless to say, times were tough. His father, Kikujiro, supported his family through a number of odd jobs. However, at home he was a problem drinker and spent a lot of his earnings on drink. And for a time, he walked out on his family. His leaving was met with mixed feelings. Takeshi's mother, Saki, had always put a huge emphasis on her children's education. And she spent the little money she had on books and schooling for her kids. Saki lost her family in infancy, and she lived as a servant before her arranged marriage to Kikujiro. She knew the key to escaping poverty was a good education, which is why she didn't want her kids working. However, the burden of being a single mother was too much to bear alone. Takeshi's eldest brother took on the responsibility of being the head of the household, and he helped support the family financially. Young Takeshi loved being the center of attention, and he dreamed of being someone big. He played baseball and did boxing later, though once his grades started to slip, his mother KO'd his boxing dreams. Takeshi was particularly good at math and art, and in high school he dreamed of becoming an engineer for a big automotive company. Takeshi was accepted to the prestigious Meiji University to pursue that dream. This was during the 1960s, and while Japan didn't really have a flower power hippie movement, Takeshi was a kind of futen. Takeshi had gotten into French existentialism, art, and literature. He spent a lot of his time reading up on it. He also got into jazz and spent a lot of his time in Shinjuku. During his time in university, Takeshi became very conscious of his mortality. He thought, how could I die without doing something I really want to do? Though he himself didn't know what he wanted to do. He decided to drop out much to the disappointment of his mother. Over the next few years, he worked numerous odd jobs. Waiter, salesman, supermarket clerk, taxi driver. He even tried to get his old dream back and apply to an automotive company, but was of course rejected. His decision of free will had caused him to live a very limited life. He was a poor nobody working dead-end job after dead-end job. And Takeshi had grown sick and tired of being sick and tired. Nationally, Japan was seeing a new wave of comedians come front and center, and Takeshi was becoming more and more attracted to the limelight of comedy. In 1972, he decided to devote everything he had to make it as a comedian. He moved to Asakusa, the entertainment district in Tokyo. He'd spend his days going up and down the street searching for comedy theaters for a comedian to take him as an apprentice, which was how it was done back then, but no one accepted him. One day, he stumbled upon a different kind of theater. It was basically a strip club, but they had a stand-up comedian. Fukami Senzabudo. Takeshi loved his comedy and hoped to become his apprentice. The theater agreed on the condition he would first start work as the elevator operator. After a couple of months of paying his dues, his apprenticeship began. Fukami wasn't particularly keen on having an apprentice, but was won over by Takeshi's earnestness. And soon after, Fukami had taught him everything he knew about comedy. An opportunity presented itself when a senior comedian resigned and Takeshi was more than ready to take his spot as MC. Takeshi was now a big fish in a small pond, and he was thinking about his next step. Another comedian at the theater, Kiyoshi, wanted to team up with him and take their act to Tokyo. Takeshi was hesitant at first, mostly because he thought abandoning his master and the theater would be an act of disloyalty. But the thought of being stuck in the same place for the rest of his life scared him, and he joined Kiyoshi and abruptly left the theater. They joined a talent agency and worked under Columbia Toplight, and were given a new duo name. Despite having a proper talent agency, they were actually making less than they were before, and they weren't landing many gigs. The gigs they did land were at sleazy nightclubs. Takeshi grew extremely frustrated and began showing up to rehearsals drunk, or not at all. He would even yell at the audience if they didn't laugh. The problem, in Takeshi's eyes, was that Kiyoshi's joke writing just wasn't that funny, and they disbanded for a time. 
During their time apart, Takeshi gained a lot of inspiration from Shimada Yoshichi. His fast-paced vulgar manzai was exactly what Takeshi wanted to do. Takeshi started writing new material and reunited with Kiyoshi. This time they'd call their duo 2B, and they'd be known as Beat Takeshi and Beat Kiyoshi. Their new style of comedy, which was mostly Takeshi monologuing with Kiyoshi interjecting retorts, would go on to influence numerous comedians. And their rise to popularity helped Manzai become a cultural phenomenon later in the 80s. A lot happened to Takeshi in his private life during Two Beats' rise to fame. He married another comedian, Mikiko, and had two kids. His father, Kikujiro, died, and despite their falling out, his family was there on his deathbed. In an interview, Takeshi said his father's last words were, I'm sorry. Tragedy would once again strike when his former master Fukami died in a house fire. Takeshi took his death especially hard. Fukami was the man who got his foot in the door and helped him grow as a comedian. He deeply regretted not going back to see Fukami after he had made it in showbiz. It was around this time Takeshi started acting, writing, and hosting his own shows. He was showing a darker side to him, and he took the role of a serial killer, Kiyoshi Okubo, for a TBS documentary. This was also the same year Takeshi starred in Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence as a sergeant in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Takeshi had begun taking his career in a very different direction, and though his duo 2-beat didn't formally disband, they both began working separately. I'd like to note that Beat Kiyoshi didn't vanish into obscurity, and he found his own success. Takeshi, on the other hand, well, he was about to become a legend. <laughs> 